Between 1801 and 1901, Manchester's population increased from 330,000 to 2.4 million. It was Cottonopolis. It was the city at the heart of the Industrial Revolution. That fact is itself the result of a certain amount of happenstance. Certainly, the waterways of Manchester helped, as did its long tradition of weaving. But in a sense, it was fortuitous that Manchester was the spot where the two great streams of the Industrial Revolution came together. The larger and later stream started in Glasgow, where James Watt sat at the knees of scientists and developed his idea for a separate condenser steam engine, one that would radically increase the efficiency of this power-producing marvel over the earlier Newcomen engines. Watt couldn't actually produce an effective steam engine in Glasgow. He didn't have good enough metal parts. So almost by chance, he ended up moving down to Birmingham and partnering with Matthew Bolton, who brought his own political skills, financing, remarkable organizational talents to the problem. None of that could have happened without the metalworking traditions of Birmingham, which enabled the quality of the engine to be strong enough. The other stream, the earlier one, the more incremental stream, involved a, a series of inventions in the creation of cloth, often with quaint names like the flying shuttle or the spinning jenny or the spinning frame that enabled the mass production of fabric. Richard Arkwright was the industrialist and pioneer who brought together those two streams here in Manchester. Arkwright built on a chain of ideas that starts perhaps when Lewis Paul a Huguenot exile, comes up with the idea of roller spinning. Paul is unable to commercialize on his idea, but it remains in the air and gets taken up by Thomas Hise. Hise's knowledge is then borrowed or perhaps stolen by John Kay, who is then employed by Arkwright, himself a wig maker. All of these debates about intellectual property are hashed out in a great lawsuit that follows upon Arkwright's patent. Arkwright is able to take the idea of roller spinning, turn it into the spinning frame, and then build the Cromford Mill, one of the great industrial successes of its time period. But of course, Cromford is powered by water and hence is outside a city center. And that's why he builds his Shoothill Mill here in Manchester. Now, Shoothill tries to use a new common engine rather than a later Bolton and Watt model and hence doesn't really work and he has to use water power anyway. But still, it points the way towards a future in which steam power allows mills to come into city centers. Now, of course, as they come in, they also belch forth smoke. And Manchester becomes a city of grayness, a city of air pollution, a city of water pollution, and a city that is known for often horrific working conditions for the industrial working classes. Indeed, it is here in which Friedrich Engels writes his condition of the working class in England. But at the same time, it would be foolish to nostalgize the pre-industrial past. The Industrial Revolution is the watershed that marks the division between an almost eternal past of human misery and poverty and our present age of prosperity and wealth. The pre-industrial past was an era of infant mortality, of disease, of starvation. Our post-industrial world for all of its problems is not. And we should never forget that at the heart of the Industrial Revolution, there was this city. There was Manchester, the place of urban creativity, of enormous competition, of enormous innovation.